Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you how I created my milk bottle mask inspired by Ramal Huzumi, using only recycled materials and just whatever I had lying around. As we know from last week's lesson, Ramal Huzumi created his masks using recycled materials and found objects, usually starting with a petrol can. He was inspired by African masks and the people around him in his country. As you can see, I've started with a milk bottle, which I have added other bits and pieces to. I have not used a pen, pencil, paintbrush. This is all done just with 3D materials and techniques only. And this is what I want you to challenge yourself to do in this piece of work. To make your mask, you're gonna need a milk bottle. I've got a lovely four pinter, but two pints will do. Even one pint of milk you can do something with. And I'm just going to go over and have a little rummage in my overflowing recycling bins. Okay, so I just want to show you how I've assembled my space and materials um, prior to making my mask. Um, I live in quite a small flat, but I managed to find a bit of space on the balcony. It means I get to sit out in the sunshine as well. Um, and I've just laid the tablecloth out to, to just uh, get everything ready and to um, make sure I've got some room to work. Um, the materials I've chosen, well... I've started off with uh, a milk bottle because if you can see down the middle you've got the handle and a space on two sides which can kind of make a bit of a an eye and nose shape. Um, if you don't have a milk bottle just use whatever big bottle or object you've got as a base. Okay, I've also dug out some good old toilet rolls, um, a few cardboard boxes, cereal boxes, still eating up my Easter eggs. Uh, we've got some fruit shoot bottles. Um, yogurt pots and over here <clears throat> the three main things I'm using are sellotape scissors little pair of nail scissors um, some of you might have a glue gun at home if you do awesome um, super glue or you know anything else you might have lying around but this is just what I have to hand so something else that I have um, available to look at for a little bit of inspiration I've printed off some of my PowerPoint slides. Um, you don't have to print stuff off. You can just look at it on a tablet or a laptop screen or your phone or anything like that that you've really got. So Ramal Tazumi, as we know, uses recycled materials to create his masks with. So he's my main bit of inspiration. I know that Ramal Tazumi is um, inspired by African masks um, through kind of having it around in his culture. Um, but I also quite like the sort of simple geometric shapes that you use, particularly on this one. Lots of round shapes like my lids and things. And um, I quite like the patterns on the faces on here. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but um, quite interesting. Uh, what I've also got is uh, something that I'm personally into. So you might have um, a certain style or interest that you kind of like to take into your own, um, you know, into your own mask. Some of you might be quite interested in superheroes. I quite like steampunk. It's a bit of a sort of dark, cyber, vintage, kind of gothy style. Um, makes me think a little bit about what's going on at the moment, really, because we've got like that kind of gas mask situation, one of those weird 1600s sort of plague doctor masks. And uh, this one actually uh, reminds me of C-3PO. Weird, huh? Okay, um, lastly, I quite like the idea of having a bit of expression in my mask, so I've uh, printed off some drama masks to sort of give me some idea about how eyebrows are shaped, how the mouth's shaped when it's sort of, you know, in a quite extreme expression like sadness or laughing. So this is going to be quite useful for me as well, but you'll see what I'm going to do with this a bit later on. Okay, so once I'd washed and dried my materials and cut off the labels, I started thinking about what I was going to use and how I wanted to arrange it. I quite liked the circular bottoms of the fruit shoots, so I cut them off with a sharp pair of scissors. I realised I could make quite a good pair of eyes with them, like the geometric eyes that are on one of my African mask examples and the steampunk masks. To stick them onto the bottle, I just used sellotape, which is what I had at home. I wanted to change the shape of the head, so I cut off the bottom of the milk bottle, although from this angle it looks like the top, and cut slits down the sides, then tape them in place. I quite like this weird hole at the top, and I had to think about what I could put in it. I decided my mask needed hair, so I dug out my Easter egg box and cut a rectangle out to fit the width of the hole. 
Then cut lots of slits down from the top to about an inch from the bottom. I then manipulated these strands of cardboard by rolling them tightly from the top to the bottom of the slit and then un unravelling them slightly to make them into curls. Once I'd finished, I stapled them into place. I wanted to do something with these triangular yoghurt pots, so I cut them down the folded bit first and trimmed the shape down a bit. I quite liked the smaller triangle to be an unusual shape on the forehead, but the bigger bits I thought would make quite good ears. I made sure they were stuck down quite securely at the back as well as the front. Unfortunately, my phone decided to stop recording halfway through, but you can see here how I continue to use similar 3D techniques for the rest of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some inspiration for what you could do on your own mask. Remember, aim to be as 3D as possible. Use whatever you've got at home, it doesn't matter if you don't have something. You need to use your creative problem solving skills and think about what you could do or use instead. Also, if you do have smart materials at home, you can use these too. You might want to add paper mache, mod rock, paint or glue craft materials like feathers or matchsticks on. For those of you who don't have any art materials at home, I'm going to upload another video soon that will show you how to make paper mache using the stuff in your cupboards. I look forward to seeing your fantastic creations.